Hey, so today I'm going to be working with Markov Chain and its application to actuarial science. And my name is Jose, and as you probably saw here, I am an actuarial science major. Um, so for my application, I'm doing Markov Chain, and I'm going to be working with the predator prey system. So I got my um, example, my question from the um, David C. Lake textbook. Chapter 5, and um, yeah, so I'm going to be working on this, and I'm going to try to also teach you how to do it. So first of all, Markov chain are incredible because they are used to predict um, future in the long term. So you're trying to predict future in the long term, not psychic future, but math future, using math. <laughs> um, so, in the following example that I got from the textbook, so we have owls and we have rats. We all know owls eat rats, owls eat mice. So this takes place in California and so here we have an owl and a rat population and that are denoted by time k given in months. Um, and then given in months of x, k, which equals this vector of owl population, rat population. That's, that's what we're trying to do. So OK, I keep on saying OK. Um, owl population mean, is the OK, and then RK means rat population, K just means population. So we're given this two equations. We're given zero, so, I keep on saying zero. Our population equals 0 0.5, our population plus 0 0.4 rat population. And then the other equation is the rat population is a negative P times QK plus 1.1 times RK. So here, this 0 0.5 our population in the first equation indicates that only half the owls will survive each month if there are no wood rats. So now let's see. We plug in a zero here. We're talking about owl population. If you plug in a zero here, this is saying the owl population is going to die by half every month. So in a month, you're going to have half the owls left. And then the second month, you're going to have half that um, population of owls. Third month, half, half, half that population. So your population is going to die by half every month if you have zero wood rats. And the second equation, this 1.1 um, rat population indicates that there, is, there would be um, a 10% growth in the rat population if there were no owls as predators. So now let's see, we plug in a zero here. This means that your rat population is going to grow by 10%. Uh, um, this is your rat population. Okay? So now this um, 0 0.4, this means if your rat population is plentiful and there's a lot of rats, then um, this will make the owl population rise. Um, okay, so the owl population is rising, then you have this rats, they're eating, so more food. Uh, th that's that. Um, so now, this negative P. I was confused at first. Um, so this negative P measures, um, this negative P means, um, is a parameter. So this is going to measure the deaths of rat due to the predicted owl, um, predictions of owls. And we're going to use this equation to find our owl and rat population. Um, okay, so the textbook tells us P is going to be, it says here, your predation parameter is going to be 0 0.104. So this is going to become 0 0.104. And don't forget, you have your negative there. That's the equation we're given, okay? Um, we're going to create a matrix. And this matrix, all it is is going to have this owl population, rat population, we're going to plug them in, 
and we're gonna have this owl population, okay? I'm mean, not owl population, I'm just kidding. Um, this uh, matrix. So using this matrix, um, so using this equation, we must set up a coefficient matrix. And then after that, we're gonna try to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors, eigenvectors. So yeah, we're gonna find their corresponding eigenvectors. So recall that the eigenvalue and eigenvector equation is the matrix times x equals lambda times x, okay? So now that we must evaluate and solve for eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we don't know them. Ah, so now we're gonna try to find them. So to find eigenvalues, we must rearrange this equation into, you could either have a minus lambda i or you can have lambda i minus a. I prefer lambda i minus a because you're gonna end up with the lambda squared and I don't like lambdas times the negative lambda, me lambdas, negative lambdas. Um, okay, so here we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna find a determinant to find eigenvalue and then we're gonna find the corresponding eigenvectors. Okay, so Let me just get ready for y'all. Okay. Using this eigenvalue identity matrix is the same as an identity matrix, except you're just substituting the ones with the eigen, um, the lambda. So here you're gonna have determinant lambda zero zero lambda minus a. And your A is here. You're going to have 0 0.5, 0 0.4, negative 0 0.104, and you're going to have this 1.1. 1 .1. Okay? X equals 0. After that, you're going to subtract. So you're going to have determinant of lambda minus 0.5, negative 0 0.4, uh, negative minus a negative is a positive, so you're going to have 0 0.104, and you're going to have lambda minus 1.1. To find the determinant, we know, oops, we know that we must multiply the diagonals and, and um, then multiply these other diagonals and subtract these diagonals from these two diagonals, okay? So what we're gonna do is x minus 0 0.5 times, I said x, I'm just kidding y'all. That's lambda, minus 1.1, and then we're gonna have minus negative 0 0.4 times 0 0.104, okay? So here, this is fairly simple, except you need a calculator for this. Um, so I'm gonna do this in blue. We're gonna uh, multiply these out, and we're gonna, you're gonna have, you know, if you um, distribute this, if you Foil it, you know, first, outside, inside, last. You're going to have x squared. Subtract these, you're going to have negative 1.6 lambda. You're going to have negative 1.6 lambda, okay? And then right after that, you're going to have this 0.5 times this 1.1, and you're going to get point, so positive 0.55. Now here, you're gonna have this negative 0.4 times this 0 0.104, and then you're gonna subtract it, which is gonna make it a positive. So you're gonna have positive, and there you're gonna have 0 0.0416, okay? Right after that, awesome, cool, we're gonna have, all you have to do is add like terms. There's not that many. There's lambda squared minus 1.6 lambda. And then here you're going to have plus 0 0.5916. Okay? 
after this, you're going to foil your lambdas. Factor your lambdas. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, and you're going to have lambda, lambda. But now we encounter a problem. This is a, a decimal. It's kind of hard. It's a rational decimal, but it's kind of hard to get your, um, your exact values. It's easier if you do it by calculator. So we know this is a quadratic formula, so it's uh, not quadratic formula, a parabola, so you're going to have a little u. And it's a happy u because there's a positive. And when people are positive, they're happy. Um, so when you do this in the calculator, you're, if you zoom in really, really good, you're going to see your x-axis, and you're going to see it just barely goes under, and then it goes right over again. So be really careful to that, because you could get it wrong, and you could probably be like, oh, no, it doesn't touch, or it touches once, and it's gone. So for your lambdas, you're going to get your lambda 1 to equal 1.02 and your lambda 2 to equal 0 0.58. Right after that, you're going to have your two lambdas. Now you can use this equation here, but you're going to use lambda i minus a times x equals 0. Okay? Now remember, this lambda i minus a times x equals 0, it's very similar to that ax equals zero. Do you remember what we do when we have this and you have your matrix but you don't know your x? Yeah, okay. So what you're gonna do is either inverse or you're gonna um, find uh, your reduced echelon form. But in this case, we don't wanna do that because you're gonna get back to your identity matrix which is not what we want. So, what we're going to do here is we have this. It's, it's here, right? So we're going to use this, except we're not going to use the determinant anymore. What we're going to do there is substitute this 1.2 into here, and then we're going to do the um, lambda 2 in there. So when you plug in your 1.02 minus 0 0.05, you're left, so when you do lambda 1, you're going to have, so you have this 0 0.5, you're going to subtract that, you're going to have 0 0.52. And then your negative 0 0.4, there's nothing to subtract, so you're going to be left with a negative 0 0.4. 0 .4. And then your, neg um, your 0 0.104, also stays the same, 0 0.104, and then your lambda minus 1.1, your, so your 1.02 minus 1.1 is um, negative 0 0.08. You're probably like, whoa, how does he know all this? Just kidding, I, I'm using help. Uh, so right after this, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna, so after you find this, you're going to augment with zeros. You're not going to row reduce echelon form, but you're going to do Gaussian elimination. So all you have to do is reduce uh, row echelon form. You're not going to reduce it. You're just going to do go to your calculator. Right under uh, reduce REF, RREF, you're going to do REF. So the REF of this becomes your REF becomes 1 and negative 10, 13, and then, you know, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's what you get in the calculator. Okay, so remember, if you're going to do uh, reduce echelon, I mean, row echelon form, uh, don't mess up your negative because you will get a different answer and you will be confused like I was for two days. Um, so right after this, here, we know that we have owl population and rat population. So what we're going to do here is 
one, our population, 